Had to wait for which way it was pointing because there was contact on both sides. Luis Perez, the one, a judge to a foul. Then Talu, flag stays down. Into the box, Anderson! Number 15 for Olex Anderson in a flash. Combining with Nathan and Talu, they break forward and on the road. North Carolina trying to catapult themselves back top of the table. Start by Louis Perez. That one definitely on sides. Just watch the run. The number nine looks to be in front of the defender when it's kicked. We'll also have to see based on the position that the cross came in from, but a brilliant pass in by Nathan Intalu registers his first assist for North Carolina. In behind. Flag stays down. Mensingen, dangerous, onto the right. Cervania, McLaughlin, puts down one, low left-footed, off the bench. Garrett McLaughlin, the insurance goal. The left foot, we'll see it again. Again, it's a move forward quickly. Rafa Mensingen, the man, the point person this time, bringing it in field. Cervania could have taken a shot from here, decided to pass it off. McLaughlin fakes the first one. Lewis may have jumped his spot a little bit, preparing for the first time shot. And McLaughlin spotted it beautifully and able to just curl it in with the left foot. We'll see it one last time. Just dropping the shoulder. And that one in the bottom left corner. A chance for three from the spot. Mensingen puts it in. 3-0 North Carolina. If there were any remaining doubts that surely dispels them. They'll be heading top of the league after tonight. With his, we'll see the penalty again here. He's able to bury that one. Tough to save even if he gets the right way, but Lewis. Dennett not seeing a clear route forward, wasn't going to turn it over. Now Johnson trying to hit Flanagan. Abion Flanagan nodding it down. Bennett trying to get on the end of it. It deflects over him and bounces into the net. And the Jacks have jumped in front before halftime. Scrappy, ugly, doesn't matter. 1-0, Charlotte. A blue breakthrough. Flanagan, an intelligent header back, and it just deflected up off Bennett as Stephen Payne tried to clear it. Put it off Bennett instead. Yeah, off Bennett's face, and Shipman was stranded. Nothing he could do. And it's the boys in blue who will take the lead. Sis stabbing it for Mbuyu. That's a beautiful ball. Mbuyu has Bennett in the middle. He pulls it back. It's Sis arriving, and it's Omar Sis doubling the lead for Charlotte and putting them in pole position today. Beautifully worked down the right, and Mbuyu continues to turn provider. That's such a good pick out, and Sis times his run perfectly. Normally unsung, doesn't score many goals, but picks his spots to get forward and picks the perfect one. Now these are two teams that are certainly Looking to show for themselves in Lexington, like I mentioned earlier. Not eliminated yet, but you know, look at the numbers. It's highly unlikely. Lomas slips it by the keeper. And Chattanooga scores on the road. That's a fantastic ball from Felipe. Able to slide that one down. And Lomas connects on it. And that long awaited to win all the rest of their games. And they need either Greenville or Madison to nearly lose out. Felipe takes a shot and scores. It knuckles in for Johnny Felipe. What a strike from the lone E. Just finds a pocket of space. 
And that one dips down and in. And could open things back up for Lexington. Brown shoots and he scores. Lexington are on the board. And perhaps this could turn the tide in their favor for the rest of this affair. Sometimes you just need a little luck and then you can ride the wave that ensues. From Elkridge, Maryland, Nico Brown getting his eighth goal of the season. He's been fun. And the Red Wolves find a response. They've been so good here in the first 40 minutes. Kraft. Plays in the middle. Mensa! It's an immediate response from Chattanooga. Ropapa Mensa. Riley Kraft. Excellent run from him. Then he connects with the center forward who bags his 10th goal of the season. Felipe plays it out wide. Back to Alefi. Alefi, the longtime Red Wolf, finds Milongo. Now Kraft. Kraft with the ball in, skipping around, and it's headed through. It's four goals on their tally now on the finishing touch. Seeking ball from Kraft, and he's able to flick it in. Omar Gomez, just 23 years old, from Oxnard, California. Some have already racked up some assists this season. Both have shown their worth in other avenues. And here's Felipe now. Felipe driving it forward. Slips it over. Malongo! And just like that, Chattanooga with a second goal in the second half. You see here, has just got to slip that one by night. He said maybe potentially he had players asking the two of them, okay, what's Scott McKenzie like? Is he like this, is he like that? And he said, well, but I can't guarantee what sort of appraisal I was given. I would hope it was good. I have good relations with the two of them. As Diouf picks the pocket of Mikhail Williams. Ates Diouf! He puts one through. Goal number 13 on the air for the striker. Ates Diouf snatches it from Mikhail Williams. Had Aviles backpedaling. And you need to be in perfect form to stop that man, let alone on your heels. Hera looking to keep this one in play, but at the expense of giving it away. Slamini has some room to work with. He sends it forward for Diouf. That's a lovely ball. Ates Diouf goes forward, chips the keeper. And it's a brace for Ates Diouf. I want to talk about bright spots this season for Lexington. That man, if he's not at the forefront of it, he's still on the poster. 25 year old will put the ball down. Eighth appearance, looking for his 11th goal. Akale, and it all, he gets it by Lewis. What an opening goal in stoppage time for Tormenta. Kwele Kale with his 11th goal of the year. Check this out. Left footed 
ball. Beautiful strike, fading to that top corner. The man that they signed halfway through last season, and he has paid off dividends this year. Now one goal behind the team's leading scorer, Keziah Sterling. Central Valley through the gears here, back to front. Cerritos has an overlapping run. It's Billy Forbes, and Billy Forbes denied by Nuhu. Second ball is in, and Central Valley have that first goal. A goal that puts Fuego in line for a shocking upset result, and a goal that just might end Union Omaha's record-setting streak. Another well-constructed attack, and finally it pays off for Fuego. This time it squirmed under Nuhu's arm. Nuhu made another one-on-one -on -one save, but couldn't do anything about the second ball this time. Zahir Vasquez. He was it's given straight back to Kunga, however. Meza. Akoff. Surrounded by a white wall, but slides to Dolabella, who back heels from Meza, who equalizes for Omaha. <laughs> Tremendous goal. Parity restored. Hope revived. Confidence built. 1-1 with 13 minutes to play. It was a sweetly constructed goal. Look at the back heel from Dolabella. Look at the left-footed finish from Meza. He doesn't normally score with his left. He's usually a right footer, but he opened himself up and steered it unerringly into the side netting, leaving Paul Lewis, who's been excellent tonight. Dolabella swinging wildly at it, pings it into the box, chested down. It comes for Akoff. Pulled back, Gallardo. Joe Gallardo, they've done it! Turnaround complete. Ten in a row in sight. The Owls, who trailed 1-0, lead 2-1 in stoppage time. Akoff pulled it back. Gallardo took one touch out of his feet and curled it into that far corner. He didn't need a second invitation, and Paul Lewis could do nothing about it. Joe Gallardo off the bench, into the dog pile. Sylvania in an interesting position. He gets out the way. Leaves it for McLaughlin, and it's in! Garrett McLaughlin makes it 1-0 North Carolina. He left Lalo Delgado completely flat-footed. McLaughlin's eighth goal of the season. Gives NCFC the lead here late in the first half in Windsor. You can see Savania got out the way. Oleg Sanderson was there at the edge of the box. He moved out the way, and that's exactly where McLaughlin went. The Hailstorm player at the edge of the wall also moved. As you can see, Lalo Delgado just threw up his hands. Robles. He gives it away. Raheem Summersaw now. To the left side. Oleg Sanderson, and it's 2 0. Oleg Sanderson against the run of play. The turnover by Hailstorm, and they're made to pay. It's sweet 16 for Oleg Anderson on the season. Raheem Samasol with the assist. His third assist of the campaign. It's the giveaway. Oleg Sanderson salutes the crowd. <laughs> Not sure they'll appreciate that, but he won't care. Here was Summersaw with the assist. And it was a calm and composed finish inside Lalo Delgado's far post. That's in. Finds Castro. And it's in. I take that back. There's Alan Gavalanias in the left channel. And it's 1 0 triumph. The two wingbacks working together on the same side of the field. And the triumph with a late goal that will certainly change. First goal of the season to add to his seven assists. It was good work by Frankie here. Gavalanias just drifted back into space and the kickers forgot about him. They were too focused on the ball. It was a good first touch from Gavalanias to set himself up with too much power on that left-footed effort. Coutinho thinks about committing the foul but doesn't. Hornsby now. 
out wide. This is Sierakowski trying to get back to his left foot and does Sierakowski evens things up. In the third minute of stoppage time, it's Ryan Sierakowski. His fourth goal of the season. John, Hack, John Harks might be asking why there was the extra minute added on. The goal obviously from Gavalagna, so it was a lovely move from Sierakowski. He can do that kind of thing. He's got that talent. It was a beautiful ball from Hornsby. Oh, that was beaten on the inside move. And a classy finish. Pinching in from his left wing spot. He'll chip it ahead for Castro, who shrugs off the challenge. Leo Castro to the edge of the box. And that's a beautiful finish by the Colombian. There was questions of a foul. He shrugged off the challenge of Trandall O'Dwyer. But no whistle, but a 12th goal of the season for that man, Leo Castro. He shrugged off the challenge of the Englishman. Faked out Palmquist with the initial fake shot, I should say, and then just lifted it over him. Palmquist was dead to rights at that point. He committed in no man's land.